So now he needs his ears. Um, you will have knitted two little bits like that and left a nice long piece to attach them with. Horse's ears kind of go forwards. We want the rolly edge to face towards his nose. So we need to position his ears on his head and sort of pinch them together a little bit into a sort of a V shape like that and then just secure them onto his head with a few stitches. I'm sure that many of you are more perfectionist and neater than me. And I hope that there are not lots of you who are horrified by my slightly slapdash approach to these things. But equally, my message would be, don't worry too much. There we go. And then run your needle back through the knitting to weave it through and snip off the end. He's still not looking very horse-like, is he? Don't panic about that. He looks a little bit like a very thin polar bear or possibly a dog who's hoping to pretend to be a horse. Let's try this side. Again, I'm pinching the ear together a little bit. Roughly line it up there. Just secure the last stitch and run it back through your knitting. You'll notice, by the way, that I ran out of my original colour. So I've got three different colours of creamy white going on. I don't think we'll worry about that either. There you go. Now he looks like a very thin piglet, but now we need a mane. That makes a really big difference. So take a piece of cereal box or cardboard. Mine is about 20 centimetres wide. You want it to be about the width of the whole mane, going from one end of the mane to the other, and then wind some yarn around your cereal box and you might want to do the same colour like I did here with my black charger or you might want to use a contrast colour. I'm using a slightly contrast colour here more because I've run out than for any other reason and I cut a tiny tiny slit to each side here just to secure uh, my beginning and end while I was winding. So I'm going to just pull those out now, bend over my cereal box cardboard and just lift this little set of main yarns off and then just place it over your horse's head like that. Now I'm going to do some big running stitches going through the middle here and I'm going to start them a little way back from the ears because this part here is going to come forwards like a forelock. I think that's what you call it. So I'm just going to pull my stitches through This is a little bit fiddly. You just need to make sure you don't gather up your mane in the loop of your stitch. So I'm going to go back in and then a little bit further back. Back in and a little bit further back. It's absolutely fine if this horse's mane is a little bit scruffy, so really don't worry if it's not all perfectly aligned. So just tie off your last stitch and the end of your yarn can join in with the main, as can the beginning. And now you just want to snip through those loops all the way along. And then you can either leave it like that, which is absolutely fine, or you can unravel, untwist each little bit. So that you get a more hair like look. That is a little bit of a fiddle and is maybe a job to do in front of the television. 
So we're nearly there. Um, we've got something that's starting to look a little bit more like a horse, but what really helps is to put on his reins and bridle. On our pattern, we're suggesting that you cast on two or three stitches and knit garter, garter stitch for as long as you need and measure each piece. You're gonna need three bits, one that goes around his nose, one that goes through his mouth and up behind his ears, and one that loops around from either side of the mouth to be held by the soldier who's riding him. Um, what I've done is to use I-cord to make a little braid. Um, what I've done is on sock needles to cast on two stitches, and then instead of turning your knitting around when you get to the end of your row, like that, and knitting back again with your yarn on your first stitch, what I'm doing is sliding my knitting up to the other end of my needle and then the yarn will be on the back stitch and then I start to knit from the beginning and give that a little tug and it looks a little bit like French knitting so it just comes out like a little circular braid and again push it to the other end of my stitch of my needle sorry and knit the next row And just measure, keep measuring, to see if you've got a piece as long as you need it to be. When you've finished, just pop one stitch over the other. And break your yarn and thread it through. Leaving a nice long end for stitching it down onto your horse's nose. Those are my reins. So I've got a piece that, a long piece for my reins, a piece that will go around through my horse's mouth and up behind his ears, and a piece that will go around my horse's nose. And I'm just going to show you how to stitch those on. So here he is. He's got a short piece going around his nose and under his chin. He's got a slightly longer piece going through his mouth and up behind his ears. And then he's got a long piece which is secured at that crossing point on either side to become his reins. So all he needs now is eyes and a saddle. So on our pattern sheet, we have a pattern for a blanket, which is a piece of knitting folded over. Um, you can make it any colour you like. The, the, the pattern sheet tells you how to do one that's the same colour as our example here that my mum knitted, which has a dark coloured, dark red coloured piece on the edge. But you can be really creative and make it any size that you like. To be completely honest, I have doubled over a piece of sample knitting that I was doing, a swatch, and it fits just absolutely fine. And then we've got a little pattern for a saddle that's around about that shape. And we're gonna stitch that down onto our blanket so that these garter stitch pieces slightly roll up to make it look like a saddle. I'm gonna stitch the saddle onto the blanket before I put it on the horse so that I can get the shape I want. And I want the saddle to rise up very slightly and I want it to fold back very slightly. So I'm gonna find the middle of my blanket and I'm just going to do a stitch on one side and just hide that end. Just going to do a couple of stitches. And then I'm going to roll my thread underneath the blanket and I'm just going to push that saddle up slightly and let it roll back. And I'm just going to catch the edge to make sure that roll keeps happening that then looks like the shape of the saddle and then I'm going to use the same thread just to secure it onto the horse's back so I'm just going to go down and into the horse and push it through the horse oops I've lost the end push it, push it through the horse's back there Bring it back up into the saddle and then once 
once more down onto the horse's back. And I'm gonna use the same thread to stitch some eyes onto my horse as well. So I'm just gonna secure that stitch in there. I might just come back up and catch the edge of that saddle as well. Because I do want that to stay rolled over. There we go, now I'm gonna tie it off. And then I'm just gonna give my horse some eyes just on the side here. So you can see his little eyes here. I've done a little oval shaped um, eye with dark brown to make his pupil in a sort of a um, two or three stitches to make a kind of oval shape. And then I've stitched just slightly over the top of that with three more stitches in the same colour as his fur to make a little eyelid. Thanks so much for knitting the cavalry for us. Click the thumbs up sign below this film if you enjoyed it and found it helpful. Leave us a comment if you'd like to see more. Happy knitting!